So in this video, we're going to see how we apply u substitution when it comes to trigonometric functions. So let's go ahead and get started. So here I started off by giving you the rules of trigonometric functions when it comes to sine, cosine, secant squared, cosecant squared, secant tangent, and cosecant cotangent, right? And then we also talked about that the relation between the 3c's rule is actually going to be opposite, right? So the 3c's rule is actually going to be opposite, that is no longer taking the integral of a function that starts with c giving you a negative integral, it is that when you end up with a, with a trigonometric function that gives the starts off with the c, you actually get a negative integral, right? So when you end up with an integral that starts off with a c, you get a negative integral, not when you integrate a function that starts off with a c. It's kind of backwards. So let's go ahead and get started in how we transfer that information into actual u sub. So here we have evaluate the integral of sine cosine of x, right? So the idea here, when we discussed it in the beginning, was that we can pick either sine or cosine to be our u sub, right? Because it didn't matter. There was no difference between them. The derivatives were each other. So it was like, who do we pick, right? And the deal is that we can pick either. In this problem in example one, we can pick either to be our u sub. So I'm just going to go with, hey, let me pick the first one, right? I'm going to say that here. I just want to pick u to be sine. And... I'm going to tell you to go ahead and pick u to be cosine and do the problem the same way and we're going to end up with the same answer. All right. So I pick u to be cosine. If I pick u to be cosine. I'm going to go ahead and actually put that over here on the right side. So if u is cosine, my du is going to be my du is going to be cosine dx and my dx I'm going to do it in blue and then after that after I pick my u my du I'm going to go ahead and solve for dx which means I'm going to divide both sides by cosine so then I get du I mean dx is equal to du divided by cosine okay so I have my dx and I am three steps done with this problem I need to go ahead and just replace everything substitute everything in terms of u so this guy, which is my first guy, I'm going to let him equal to u. This guy, this cosine that I have, I haven't substituted him yet because I, I picked my u to be sine and not cosine. So my cosine is staying here. So that's a problem because it has an x in it, and I do not like x's when it comes to u subs. And my dx is not going to be replaced with du over cosine of x, right? So I'm replacing my du that I got over here right in here. So... Right off, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out the cosine that I have here with this cosine that I have here because I don't like it. It bothers me to have that cosine there. And now, I am going to go ahead and kind of clean this up. I'm going to have u du, right? And now, if I integrate my u du that I have here, it is going to give me u squared over 2 plus c, right? I just have a u to the 1, which I need to integrate by adding 1 and then dividing by that exponent. So I get u squared over 2 plus c. And then my last step is going to be to just input my, substitute my u back in. So I'm going to have parentheses squared over 2 plus c, and I'm going to bring in my u back in here. So I'm going to have sine, sine of x, which is my u squared over 2 plus c. And that would be my answer. All right, so now we're going to go to example two, which is going to be a little bit different, right? Because here we're going to combine two different rules. Being able to choose a trigonometric function itself to be your u sub, to be your u, and whenever you have a function raised to a power. So the first thing I'm going to do when it comes to example two, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this sine of x. I'm going to take this two outside, which I always did this when it came to derivatives. I always took the... the the power outside because it makes it easier to see that I have a function squared, right? We use this for chain rule, but now we're going to use it for u sub, which is very similar when it comes to chain rule. So now that I have sine squared cosine of x dx, here in this case, there's actually a big difference between sine of x and cosine of x, right? It actually matters which one you pick because if I pick, if I pick sine, I'm picking the function inside of the parentheses being raised to a power. If I pick cosine, I'm picking the function that's not raised to a power that is um, not inside of a parentheses, right? So actually, with our rules, 
we're guided to picking the sine of x. We're picking we're we're guided to picking the sine of x because it's a function inside of the parentheses. That is the first, that is the very first type of problem that we run into when it comes to use of, right? So now we're gonna mix picking a uh, trigonometric function itself with the first rule of inside of parentheses. Therefore, in this case, we're locked to making our u sine of x, right? And if you didn't do this, you mean you picked your u to be cosine of x, you would actually get a whole different answer and probably wouldn't be able to get the answer when it came to step four. So remember, I told you guys that if you guys get stuck when it comes to substituting in terms of u, it is because you pick the wrong u, right? So then you go back and just pick a different u. So now let's go ahead and find du, which is going to be cosine of x, dx, right? And I solve for dx. So you guys see how those three steps are very, very natural. They just follow each other. First you pick u, and after I get u, I can find du, and then I can find dx. They just kind of follow one from the other. And I have my dx ready. And now I go ahead and substitute things, right? So starting off with my u squared, right? My sine of x is equal to u, so I have u squared. And then I go ahead and I don't have anything for cosine because I let u go to sine. So I just bring the cosine there and hopefully it cancels. And then my dx is right here, which is going to give me du over cosine of x. So then I'm going to go ahead and cancel out these two guys. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out my cosine with my cosine, therefore leaving me with u squared du. And now this becomes a simple anti-power rule, which I'm going to just integrate, right? I have u to the 2, so my integration is going to be I add 1 to the 2, so that's u to the 3, and then I divide by that exponent, and then I just add c. I add my plus C, right? I'm five steps down. I have one more step to go, which is to substitute my U back in. So therefore, all I need to do is just substitute my U back in, put a parentheses where I have my U, raise it to the exponent plus C, and then I'm going to go ahead and bring down my U, which is going to be sine of X. So in this case, it was a little bit different due to the fact that it actually mattered which one we chose to be our our u and then the other one it didn't matter so now let's go ahead and talk about example three in which focuses on angles of trigonometric functions so we start off with picking the u and in these is a little more obvious it's also a variation of the first one which talks about the function inside of the parentheses which will lead us with the angle of the trigonometric function therefore u in this case is going to be 7x so Letting u be 7x leads us to a very simple derivative or a very simple du, which is going to be just 7. And then we once again put our dx in blue to let us know that we have to solve for dx in our third step. So now we go ahead and solve for dx. And our dx is going to be equal to du over 7. All right. So now we're three steps down and we need to go steps four through six which is going to be first making everything in terms of u. So we go ahead and rewrite our integral in terms of u. That'll be sine of u, because that's what our 7x is, right? And then our du is going to be rewriting this dx, which is going to be du over 7, right? We rewrote what we saw for dx and just plugged it right in here. We're going to go ahead and do something by cleaning up, taking this 7 out, and we're going to have a 1, 7, outside so very common mistake when it comes to taking um, constants out people are going to think that if you take out a 7 it is the equivalent of just putting a 7 in front of your integral but it's not because you're actually taking a 1 a 1 over 7 because your 7 is coming from the denominator so you're going to have a 1 over 7 outside sine of u du which then becomes a very simple integral you go ahead and you go up to our little chart that we have here and when we're integrating sine we're integrating sine integration of sine ends in a function that starts off with a c which is the whole opposite three c's rule or backwards three c's rule so the integration of sine gives us negative cosine plus c so then we scroll down again and then that means that we are going to have one over seven times negative negative cosine of u plus c right so we're almost done we just need to do two things here first off Simplify our function by bringing that negative to the front, giving us a negative 1 over 7 cosine of u. That's the first thing we're going to do. And then our last step, which is putting the u back in, which can lead me with negative 1 over 7 cosine of u plus c. And I'm just going to bring in my u down here, 
leaving me with 7x and we're done any questions on how to do this problem or if this is true just go ahead and take the derivative to check if your integration is correct and now we're going to go ahead with example four which is kind of like a variation of a lot of things that we learned together we're going to start off this problem before we even pick u or du we're going to start off by taking out this two so we're going to have two integration of x to the fourth secant squared of x to the fifth plus three dx right so you could do something such as taking out this two taking out this two outside but when it comes to secant squared secant squared is tied to the integration being the integration of tangent right so because we know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared we don't need to actually take out we don't actually need to take out the square outside because we know that the secant squared itself is going to have a direct integration so we don't need to worry about the actual secant squared being the problem we need to worry about the angle of the secant squared being the problem right and since you already kind of know ahead checking if this problem is going to work means that if i derive that u if i derive that x to the fifth plus three Am I going to get an actual x to the fourth? Because you guys know that it always has to cancel at the end. The x has got to cancel. And a good, a good um, sign for being your u is that if the function that you pick, being a polynomial, an x to a certain power, the derivative of it, which would be one power less, is also in the problem, right? So in this case, we have an x to the fifth in the problem. The derivative of it is going to be an x to the fourth. Is that also in the problem? And yes, it is. So it's going to go ahead and go ahead and cancel when we find our du, right? So that's just a very quick way of saying like, okay, that's going to be my u because if I take the derivative of that, it's going to cancel with the other one that's outside that I can let equal to u, right? It's because I'm you can only pick one u. So with that being said, let's make the angle of my trigonometric function, which is x to the fifth plus three equal to u. But keeping in mind that when I take the derivative of this, I am going to be able to get the function outside, which I'm not letting equal to u. So it's going to be du is equal to 5x to the fourth, and it's going to be 5x to the fourth dx, right? And now I can go ahead and solve for dx, in which I get du is equal over 5x to the fourth. And then I try to make everything in terms of u, right? So I'm going to start off with my 2 outside times x to the fourth. Never got replaced with the u, so I just leave it as x to the fourth. And that is the problem that I keep in my mind that I need to go ahead and cancel this later on, hopefully with my dx, right? So secant squared didn't get simplified. It didn't get substituted. So all I have is the inside of my, of my secant squared, which is now u. And my dx did get changed as du over 5x to the fourth, right? So right there we have this, since we chose our u to be x to the fifth, our du is going to go ahead and cancel because it becomes an x to the fourth, and it goes ahead, goes, goes ahead and cancels out with this x to the fourth here. And we need to go ahead and take out this 5. So we're going to have 2 over 5 outside, secant squared of u, du. And if we scroll up, if we scroll up, our secant squared of u is going to be a very nice integration, very nice integration, which gives us a tangent of x, or in this case, a tangent of u. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and have 2 over 5 times the tangent of u being the integration of u plus c. That leads us to our last step, and we just bring in, we just bring down our u, and then we put plus c. And our u in this case was x to the fifth plus 3. And now we're completely done with this example. So now that we're done with all the different types of actual u substitutions, we're going to go ahead and do mixed practice problems. That means that I'm just going to give you a random practice problem, and then you have to figure out one, which one out of the five possibilities, out of the five types of problems, is this, and then you go ahead and just follow your step box. So the hardest part is actually figuring out what, is, what type of problem is this, and what do I equal to you. So once you figure that out, you just follow the step box, and we've done several, several examples, about uh, 12 of those examples, or 10 of those, in which we pick the u and just solve the whole problem. So let's go ahead and do some practice now. 